that's sure click, just in case anybody is wondering a bottle of coyote's urine yeah but that's my own pee so it's okay it's okay no, if it's, it's your own pee no it's not Fire! Coyote Pack, and welcome back to Base Camp, the not exactly adventurous show that we film here from our office in Westerville, Ohio, where we dissect old videos and tell you exactly how we made them. How are you guys feeling today? I'm feeling great. Sunny day in the neighborhood. We got a good day here in Columbus. Uh, Mario, how are you feeling about the sunshine? You're used to it in Florida, but this yeah. is new for us. Oh, today's a great day to be here in Base Camp talking about adventures. May not be an outside adventure, but the inside adventures can be just as fun, and we have an awesome episode planned for you guys today. But before we get into that, the base camp set is really coming along, and that's because mm. of you guys out there watching. We asked you to send in fan mail, and boy, did you guys send in fan mail, didn't yeah. they, Mark? Oh my goodness. So we got a call from the post office the other day, and they alerted us to the fact that we are flooding their mail rooms with all kinds of art from around the world. So we did need to tell you guys, Keep up the good work. Yes, the more <laughs> fan mail, the better, and specifically artwork. Now today, we're featuring a letter from Kit Libby. Now Kit, I did read your letter. You even wrote in here that you're like, I probably, you probably won't have time to read it. I read all of the fan mail, guys, believe it or not. But Kit also sent along Ooh. these amazing pictures. Wow. Check that out. Kit it's is quite the artist. Whoa. It's a cockroach, green that. tree frog. She's even got my favorite in here, the snapping turtle. Nice clearly watches the videos, but I really wanted to focus on the monarch butterfly, nice. which is Kit's favorite animal. And Kit asked if we could do an episode on monarch butterflies. Ooh. What do you guys think? I Absolutely. think it's a great idea. Mario, where should we do that? Ah, oh, we could go find the migration routes of the monarch butterflies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would yeah. be pretty epic. Now, I don't know when we'll get to do that, but we will put it on the episode list. We've never done a butterfly episode before, so I think it'd be a great thing to feature. Absolutely. And the good news for me is they don't bite or sting. All right, give me those pictures back. Hang on, I thought we get to keep. Well, you can have them after the episode. We got it. I don't want you, you to wrinkle it during the you, taping. You promise? Yes. I promise. You heard that. I know you, you'll put that in your pocket and you'll wrinkle it up. We don't want to wrinkle <laughs> the artwork. All right, guys, keep sending in that artwork. We will keep featuring different Coyote Pack members every week, sharing their art and encouraging you guys to get artistic when you're not watching videos. So if you guys are ready, let's plunge our hands into a burning ring of fire ants. Here we go. Whoa. Ah. You can see I'm already nervous right from the okay, beginning. Peterson. This is a mound of fire ants. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. I think we all know where this and is. And there's here. your hands. Pre scars. Well, enough oh, people had seen the harvest ant video at this point to know that, like, oh, hands, oh, ant mound. Here we go. Oh. Eesh. Mm hmm. This is already bringing me back. Man, oh, yeah. What a bad <sighs> idea this was. Yeah, I warned you. Well, a lot of people learned about fire ants we're that gonna day. We're going to talk about that in a second, yeah. Mario. Hold, hold that right there. Guys. So, when I was in Arizona, you saw me put my hands into a mound of harvester ants. Not smart. That both bites Not something you want to be doing. I lasted 60 seconds until What's funny is that this is so far before a lot of these other more painful stings. So mm. you gotta keep in mind that as we're filming the fire ants, like the bullet ant was so far down the road at that point. Like, oh, yeah. we, had, we had not even really seriously considered sure doing it. No. This pile of dirt thinking to yourselves, is that really an that, hill? That's interesting. Yeah. So these ant mounds are all over in Florida. Mario, why don't you tell us a little bit about these? Yeah, so fire ants are an introduced species to the U.S. And if you grow up in Florida, you see one of those mounds, you know there's trouble, mm -hmm. okay? So they're somewhat inconspicuous if you don't know what to look for. Right. It just looks like a pile of sand. Yeah. There's no yeah. ants on the Someone outside. Someone from Ohio, like these two guys, like you guys. Uh, we are walking around sometimes in our sandals or bare feet, and we're like, ooh, there's some like, no, sand. watch it. Yeah. yeah, and you don't know, because there, there really aren't many ants around the mouse. Sure, yeah, it's very deceiving, but as you're gonna see, once you pop a little hole. Let's see that, like right? I think it's actually coming up. I promise you, there are thousands right there. of these fiery little ants beneath the surface. And there are yeah. thousands. Mari, do you know about how many ants live in a colony? I'm thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. thousands. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it goes deeper down in the ground, really. too. That's what people don't realize. Like, just because we disturb that ant mound, they build those mounds so quickly, yeah. that mound probably would have been rebuilt by the next day. And once again, they are invasive species, mm -hmm. too. I imagine the rain does a number. Oh, yeah. Every time it rains, they probably flood out. Yeah, you have to imagine that if you're down in Florida and you're on vacation and thinking, oh, I'm going to just go out somewhere and have a little picnic, and you think to yourself, oh, look at it. This mound is kind of sandy. This might actually make a good place to sit. Whoa, bad idea. 
These were cool macro shots, though. I mean, it's tough to really tell how small these creatures are until you, you yeah, like. Okay, yeah, here we go, yeah. right there. That's a great, great example. Like, it was really hard to hold onto one of these ants without, you know, wanting to injure it or anything like that. And you can see, if you were to line these things up vertically on the fingernail of a human, you could probably pack five to eight ants on a single finger, yeah. which is I'll crazy. I'll tell you what, what is particularly impressive to me about fire ants, not only what they did to you, but also the fact that they're able to sting. Like, they can actually get through human skin being so small. Mario, how is that even possible? Sure. Well, they do have a long stinger, mm -hmm. and you know, to Coyote's point, they're small, but it's numbers that mm. count, right? So unlike the harvester ants, which are large and intimidating looking, these guys are tiny. Mm -hmm. And individually, you're like, oh, that's not gonna do much harm, but they come at you with a swarm. Yeah, with a yeah. forcive swarm that's like a tidal wave of fire and insanity and dragons and chaos. Let's keep rolling the video. I don't know, Mario. I've been stung by one or two, and it's still pretty bad. Yeah, it'll still get you. Yeah. Now, before I actually go through with this, here's my arbitrary, would have become well known selfie GoPro shots building suspense just before we get to it. And I think we were just learning at this point how to start to build that suspense in these episodes to make the audience feel like, okay, we're building to that moment. Right. And you can see here my, my tactic, you can call that out of what I learned. So back that up just a touch there. Look at, yeah, look at. What I learned from the harvestry ants mm -hmm. was tuck your pant legs into your boots, roll up your sleeves tight so that the ants can't get in your pants. But you didn't learn your lesson about getting stung by ants. It's well, funny. no, but, but for the purpose of the science experiment, I had to go through it. It was just, let's be <laughs> a little more intelligent about it this time around. <laughs> Trust me, guys, fire ants in your pants would have been the worst thing ever. Mm, for sure. Reaction in anyone who is stung. This not only causes searing pain, but also causes Oof. the sting zones to swell Takes me back. This, form is, this was just white not smart. In as little as 12 I, I was warning Coyote. In short, yeah. Science this at its finest. Let's, uh, let's talk about that real okay. quick. So, you know, here's a little backstory that I think is important that everyone in the Coyote Pack knows about. So Coyote... We, uh, wait, we should call this like responsible corner with Mark and Mario. <laughs> like you guys talk about... Coyote's like, I'm gonna do this for science. You guys are like, let's talk about this yeah. responsibly. So yeah. listen to these two for a second. Right, so everyone thinks that maybe it's Mario and I uh, putting you up to these things. We actually ask you not to do them, as a matter of fact. But in this circumstance, it's really interesting because you don't get mosquito bite welts. So therefore, I think you thought maybe you had some sort of magical immunity to ant stings or venom in general. And I remember Mario warning you saying, Coyote, I've seen what happens when people get swarmed by fire ants and it is not pretty, don't do it. And what did you say? I said, I'm the ant man. Didn't you see the harvester ant episode? I'm probably immune to fire ant stings. Yeah, they may sting me, but nothing's gonna happen. Those little white pustulate things you're talking about, not me, buddy. Don't get mosquito bite welts. Don't get bitten by deer flies, horse flies, you name it, usually good to go. Fire ants, they're tiny, not a problem. Yeah, that's right. He was very confident and I kept giving him the warning. He's like, dude, if you go through with this, it's not gonna be pretty. Mm -mm. He insisted. And uh, well, we're gonna see the results. Yeah, and not pretty is an understatement, guys, just so you know. And boy, am I about to get my fair share of them. You build yourself up for these moments and then you... Uh, Oh, old GoPro. Mm -hmm. I think that's the Hero 3, which was still encapsulated inside of a plastic container, so we had to use your camera to capture the audio that was coming from this shot. Yeah. Now you just go do that by yourself and Mario and I hang out. Oh, the Hero 6 captures amazing audio. I anaphylactic shock or anything. I did okay with the harvester ant, so... Oh, pause it real quick. So, of course, harvester ant venom and fire ant venom completely different. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. And there's a special property in the fire ant venom that's gonna actually give you some of those uh, right. things. That so the harvester later. ants then were just a swelling whereas the fire ants were going to attack my body completely differently. Yeah, and we're gonna see. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, you ready? Yeah. All right, go get in position. I'll be there in a second. All right, man. Never, under any circumstances, try to replicate what you were about to witness. See, there's a responsible video. warning for yeah. me right there. Don't do this, guys. And that's a big one. Yeah, I'm that's Gary a big Peterson. mound. Now about to enter the strike zone with the fire ant. You guys ready? Strike zone. You shot good? I, it should have been the sting zone. I don't know what I was thinking. I remember I told you, Two. dude, why don't you put the GoPro mm -hmm. in the mound itself? Yeah, look at this. Holy cow. Look at them swarming. Let, let, let's, let's see that one more time, actually. I want to go back to that. 
Look at the ant counter, because we start the countdown as soon as the GoPro gets Two, in position. Right. Look how quickly the ants are on. Yeah. Boom. Fire ants. Three are... seconds. Boom. You're covered. Yeah. They're voracious. Ow, ow, ow. Way well, the... faster than the harvester ants. Much faster. And yep. they look for soft spots in your skin. I feel like they can sense. In between the fingers uh, was definitely the worst. Yep. Guys, guys, feel your skin. In between your fingers is much softer. At that point, I was like, man, we've only gone 20 seconds into this. I got to get my hands out of here. And I failed. I couldn't get it to 60 seconds. I mean, maybe I could have, but I could feel how bad it was already getting. I, I, re I, I remember you going into this being very confident. That, like, yeah. I think you very had confident. even mentioned at one point, like, is 60 seconds enough? Maybe I should do like two minutes. Well, I, I thought say it was, that. Small, yeah. it was yeah. smaller ants. And, and to one up the harvester ants, because harvester ants, I did make it to 60 seconds. And I was thinking, well, everybody watching, I'll be like, oh, come on, go two minutes with fire ants. Whew. Good yeah. thing I didn't do that. Deceiving, right? Because of the size. Yeah. Made it 40 seconds. Hey, still very respectable. Yeah. Very respectable. A lot of pain. Oh, they're still on me. Oh, my hands are on fire right now. Yeah, so it was what, an interesting feeling. So tell me some initial thoughts right here. Are you able to really concentrate on the pain? Are you trying to not concentrate on the pain? Um, I, I guess the squeezing of my fist was more like just trying to contain and absorb the pain in one spot. It was coming on like a searing that was building. So it was like, almost like imagine putting your hands on a stove and turning them on and as it begins to heat up, it's getting more and more and more painful as the onset takes hold. Oh. Yeah, I know that feeling. Mm -hmm. That's a bit. When a mound of fire ants is disturbed, Thousands of them instantly swarm the invader. Man, if you were an unsuspecting like lizard or frog or something like that that stumbled upon a mound like this, you could see how it could yeah. kill an animal very well, quickly. Remember during one of our croc segments, I told you fire ants actually prey upon hatchlings. Right. So they do kill mm -hmm. large organisms. My tolerance finally gave out as my brain was screaming, get your hands out of that ant mound. I love these shots where the right, ants so continue to go over the lens yes. of the GoPro. We sort of learned that through the harvester ant episode. We're like, oh, we gotta get more GoPro see, shots of the ants moving over the lens. You can kind of see here, yeah. you see the welts forming. And I, I believe you thought you were out of the woods. You're like, that's it? I was like, okay, respect fire ants. I have some respect. Now I've, I at least have welts. This is more than a mosquito's ever yeah. done to me. I thought I was pretty much out of the woods at this point. Well, though. I told you that the uh, worse is yet to come. Yeah. All over them. Let's see what happens. It's actually not too bad at this point. Not too bad. It hurts at this less. point. This is like about <laughs> five minutes after really having my hands my in there. Hands so we right cut right for a second, um, you know, it's reset to get to frame up, get this outro now, shot. Want to know the answer of which is worse, the harvester ant See, so this was a good comparison. Yeah, that's a good shot. The pain was Look at the size difference. Mm -hmm. Dramatic. But obviously the swarm was more impressive with the fire ant. Right. right. This is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> it still gets me. That's my Sasquatch right there. I think we may have overdone it with the slow mos. No, it's in this. funny. You like, I like it? it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell us. Do you like the slow mos? We haven't used them in a while, but I thought they were funny back in the day. I love them. At the end of the day, the lesson that we're all taking away from this is that if you're out in nature and you're exploring, always do your best to avoid any and all ant mounds. True I'm happy statement. Look how happy you look right there. Well, you know, I seem a little more jovial at this point than I probably should have been considering what is about to happen to my hands. And for over a week, I suffered through incredible Here we goes. Here it comes. So that was, that was a little ways before we started there going after and then there you go. That's Look the next that. morning. So. I was hideous, Mark, hideous. Oh, I remember. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have it burned into my memory that morning we went to go get you for breakfast. Coyote, are you ready for breakfast? The room was all dark, and you're like, yeah. guys, I can't. And we're like, why not? My hands, look. And this was what you were covered in. And we were like, oh my goodness. It, I mean, it was gross. I looked like I contracted some sort of crazy disease. I had to wear gloves for six weeks before the pustulates went away. Now, pause it for a second. Before we get to this next part, pause it. Mario. Why do these things form into pustulates? What's the science behind this? Yeah, it's a good question. You certainly didn't get those from the harvester ant, right? So the venom of the fire ants is actually not water soluble. So it doesn't dissolve easily throughout your system. So it actually stays at the surface of your skin and creates those little pustulates, mm -hmm. which 
as you realize, are very itchy. And mm -hmm. if you pop them, will actually cause scarring. Now, I did pop some of these pustulates from just scratching them. It was so incredibly itchy. And what I didn't realize is that they were gonna leave pock marks in my hands, yes. which then in turn became scars, which at this point are gone. I don't have scars yeah. from the fire ants anymore, but wow, guys, it was quite the aftermath. And this was in the summer, so you were wearing long sleeve shirts for weeks after this. I remember we would go to the store and you'd go to pay for something and you would roll your sleeve up all over the tips of your fingers and you're like, here you go. Yeah. And it was super weird. And everyone was like, why are you doing this? And you would show people why. Well, occasionally somebody at like the grocery store, I go to buy a carton of milk and I give them my debit card and they're you're like, oh, what is, oh, what's on your hand? And I was like, hold on, let me explain. And then I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. I do these bite and sting things on YouTube. And some people would be like, oh my gosh, you're that guy. I mean, this was real early before we even had a million subscribers on the channel, yeah. but they would be like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Ugh. Like still, people think it's contagious. It's not <laughs> contagious if you're stung by fire ants. You can't like rub it on your friend and be like, ha ha, now you're gonna have pustulates. It doesn't work like that, but they are very embarrassing. Yeah, the pustulates were not the only gross thing about this video. You had uh, another trick up your sleeve, or I should say, in your backpack. That's right. Which was... Do you know the simplest remedy for neutralizing ant stings in the field? Oh. If not, make sure to click watch next. Oh man. That's just in case anybody is wondering a bottle of coyote's urine. Yeah, but that's my own pee, so it's okay. It's okay no, if it's, it's your own pee. No, it's not. No. Why not? Gross. No? Guys, that is gross, okay? Well, there is some science to this. Is there not, wildlife biologist? As gross as it seems, and it is gross, there is some science to it. Um, urine and vinegar, for example, help neutralize venoms and stings. Vinegar? Why did you not bring vinegar? There's nothing entertaining about vinegar. People want to see pee being dumped on your hands. Is that what you guys want to see? I figured it would work, and this episode, the aftermath became extremely successful. I mean, you had that great thumbnail that said, 100% pee and gazillions of people clicked on it. Yeah, but are you encouraging people to to do that? Well, in a worst case scenario, if you stumble upon a fire mound and you get stung, the best thing to do is pee on it. And in honesty, it did neutralize a lot of the pain right from the start. Now here's the backstory on the pee, right? I did read about this, and that morning I drank a bunch of orange juice, right? So it was highly acidic, and I would also make my pee a really nice, perfect pea yellow color. So it was hot pee going into the bottle, then I put it in my backpack and walked around the Everglades all day so it heated up even more. So it's hot pee going in, hot pee coming out. And trust me, you could smell it, couldn't you, Mark? Oh yeah. You know, in all, in all actuality, I thought you were pulling our legs on this one. I thought you had filled up a water bottle with a little bit of food coloring. You're like, oh guys, I'm gonna pour pee on my arms. So I made you open it yeah, I, and I could smell it well, immediately. I thought Disgusting. it was apple juice and I was about to drink it. That sounds like a you problem, buddy. But let's put it this way, for me, it was a godsend because it immediately neutralized all of the burning in my hands. But did it stop the pustulates? Not so much. So basically I got two hands full of pee and no real yeah. ultimate payoff. And you got to uh, ride back in the trunk of the Right, truck. yeah, he was not yeah. allowed to ride up, up front with us. So I've been counting and I believe there are three main takeaways mm -hmm. from this video. Number one, Apparently, pee can neutralize the sting of fire ants. Gross. Mm -hmm. Number two, look out for those sand mounds in Florida, guys. Those aren't sand, those are fire ants. And number three, Coyote Peterson is not immune to insect venom. Yeah. Right? right? Are you willing to admit that now? I still get pustulates from fire <laughs> ant stings, as will you. And uh, can I add a number four? Sure. I told you so. Oh! In all fairness, <laughs> he's right. Anyone that's stung by fire ants will get pustulates. But what this little science experiment did was educate a lot of people, in fact, millions of people, about what to look for in the environment when it comes to avoiding fire ants, and of course, if you're stung, what to do to help prevent some of that pain. What it also did for us was begin to tee up the next rungs of the insect sting pain index. Now, believe it or not, the fire ant, for as small and mighty as it is, only ranks at about a two on the scale. Mm -hmm. So that means we had a long way to go before we ultimately hit the bullet ant. But the coyote pack was cheering us on and they said, well, coyote, how about the cow killer? And sure enough, that's kind of what came up next. But we won't talk about that in this episode. Instead, we'll just encourage you guys not to pee on each other. 
Okay, it's probably a good after school message or something like that, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah. Unless of course you're stung by fire ants, right? Oh. Maybe. What if you didn't have to pee? Would you have allowed Mark to pee? Uh, let's, let's just wrap this That's up. That's what I'm saying. It's let's just go to, to the outro at this point. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mark Vins. I'm Mario Dekova. Be brave. Stay, Stay wild. wild. We'll see ya on the next base camp adventure. I gotta go pee. You didn't pee on yourself on the other things, did you? I peed on myself earlier on accident. Plunging my hands into a burning ring of fire ants was a horrible idea, but a good idea We'll be going back to watch this episode so you can see what happens when I was swarmed by the colony and stung over 300 times. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. <laughs>